أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد ناو وی آر ایٹ دی لاسٹ سیکشن اور لاسٹ رکو آف سورت الحج اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا ایوہ الناس ضرب مسن فاستمعو له ان اللذین تدعون من دون اللہ لن يخلقو ذبابا ولو اجتمعو له وَإِنْ يَسْلُبْهُمُ الظُّبَابُ شَيَّا لَا يَسْتَنْقِذُوهُ مِنْهُ ضَعُفَ الطَّالِبُ وَالْمَطْلُوبُ مَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ قَدْرِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَقَوِيٌّ عَزِيزٌ اللَّهُ يَسْتَفِي مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ رُسُلًا وَمِنَ النَّاسِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيعٌ بَصِيرٌ يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ وَإِلَى اللَّهِ تُرْجَعُ الْأُمُورُ يا ايها الذين امنوا اركعوا واسجدوا واعبدوا ربكم وافعلوا الخير لعلكم تفلحون وجاهدوا في الله حق جهاده هو اجتباكم وما جعل عليكم في الدين من حرج ملة ابيكم ابراهيم هو سماكم المسلمين من قبل وفي هذا ليكون الرسول شهيدا عليكم وتكونوا شهداء على الناس فَأَقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَاعْتَصِمُوا بِاللَّهِ هُوَ مَوْلَاكُمْ فَنِعْمَ الْمَوْلَى وَنِعْمَ النَّصِيرِ صدق الله العظيم As I said before, this is one of the most profound places of the Qur'an. As I said last night, it's the general rule with the surahs of Qur'an. That the ayat with which a surah begins and the ayat with which a surah ends, they are usually very comprehensive, very profound. And this is a very outstanding example. The first section of this surah was most profound about resurrection. Ya ayuhan nas, in kuntum fi rabim min al baas, fa inna khalaqna kum min turab, in summa min nutfat, in summa min alaqat, and so on and so forth. And this is actually a summary of the call of Qur'an which we find in these six ayat of the last section. But here this call of Qur'an has been divided into two parts. One part of the call of Qur'an is for the all mankind, Hindus, Sikhs, Christians, anybody. Because Muhammad was sent for the whole of humanity, not for Arabs. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا كَافَّةَ لِلنَّاسِ بَشِيرًا وَنَسِيرًا Now this call is for Iman. To them we can't say you should pray. He must first believe in Allah. He must first believe in the resurrection. He must believe in revelation. He must believe in Quran. He must believe in Muhammad s.a.w. Then we can say you should pray. You should fast. So any invitation for any action or deed is for the believers who say we believe. So these are two parts. Those people who don't believe, who are outside the pale of Islam, they are addressed here, Ya Yuhannas, O mankind. In four ayat, the basic three articles of faith, Tawheed versus Shirk, then Iman with Risala, institution of messengerhood, and then Qiyamah and Resurrection. These are the basic things which must be accepted by a person to be able to be addressed as Ya Ayyuhal Lazeen Amanu. But then the last two ayat, they are Ya Ayyuhal Lazeen Amanu. Now the call is for action. Whosoever says I believe in Allah and in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and in Quran and in his action, now he has to do something. So the first call is the call to Quran, to, to Iman, and this is 
for the whole mankind. The second part of call is the call of action. But here they are addressed who say we believe. Ya ayu alladheen amanu zore ba masalun fastami ula. Now those who don't believe, at that time they were the worshippers of the idols. So to them a similitude is being struck. O mankind, a similitude is struck. So listen it attentively. Fastami ula. Samiya yasmao to listen. And istama yasmao to listen attentively. This is the word which appears in Quran, Surah Al-Araf, Faizah, Quray Al-Quran, Fastamehu Lahu. When Quran is recited, you must listen to it very attentively. What is that similitude? Inna lazina tad'una min dunillah. These idols, these gods, whom you are calling upon besides Allah, la yakhluku zubaban. They can't even create a fly. What to speak of the creation of these heavens and earth and this moon and sun? Although they might gather together, all of them, but they can't create. Creator is only one. And this they accept it. If you ask them who created the heavens and earth, they will say Allah. They didn't say that these idols or these, you know, Laat, Manat, Uzza, they have created the world. Creator, they accepted he was Buddha only. Well, in Yasmum Humus Zubabu Shayyan, and if the fly snatches away something from them, La Yastan Kazu Humus, they cannot take it back from them. Zaw Fat Talib Wal Matloob. Very feeble is indeed the seeker and the sought. Now, these three words, Zaw Fat Talib Wal Matloob, they are most basically philosophical verse. Every human being has some ideal in his life. And if a human being doesn't have an ideal in his life, some goal in life, some aim, some rasmul ayn, then he is just like animals. He is not a human being at all. The animals don't have any aim of life. You are using them, you are exploiting them. But the human beings, if he is real human being, he has a goal. He has fixed some ideal for him. Some adarsh in, the, in, in Hindi they say adarsh. Nasmulayan in Arabic. Some goal, some ideal. Now if the ideal is low, that man will also be low in character. If the ideal is high, the character of that person will also rise. Corresponding. If the ideal is low, then you are low in morality. If your ideal is high, you yourself go up in morality and character. Now, actual matloob is Allah. You must love Him. He is the matloob. As we have in Surah Al-Baqarah. Those who believe, they have the, the strongest love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the matloob. Who is matloob? La matlooba illallah. La maqsooda illallah. La mahmooba illallah. This is the crux of Tawheed. La matloob illallah. If Allah is matloob, your character will go up and up and up. Just like, so to say, the character of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His matloob was Allah. But whosoever has a lower ideal, then he will himself steep low in morality. Ma qadar Allah haqqa qadrahi. They have not esteemed Allah with the true esteem due to Him. Now what concept we have of Allah? These mushrikeen, they thought he's a big king, okay? He's a big king, but the king has also, you know, there are, there are ranks and files in the armies, and the king is nothing without the army. So, Allah has also some subordinates, and he needs their help. So that was, and that is the shirk that they have committed. Because they couldn't understand, they couldn't think that Allah can be so powerful that He doesn't need anybody. He can control the whole universe Himself. He has created angels, but not that because He needs them. He has created, but He can control the whole universe every moment Himself. So Allah is very powerful, very powerful, omniscient, omnipotent. 
So there can be no higher ideal than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If somebody can esteem Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the true esteem, he will have him only as the ideal and matloob and nothing else. مَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَقَوِيٌ عَزِيزٌ Verily, Allah is very powerful, strong, mighty. Now comes the second article of faith, and that is the institution of messengerhood. اللَّهُ يَسْتَفِي مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ رُسُلًا وَمِنَ النَّاسِ Now this messengership of Allah has two links. Allah has to send down His message to the common human beings. He takes two links. First of all, he gives his message to the angel. He is closer to Allah. He was created out of light. So Allah gives this message to whom? To the angel. Now angel brings it to the man who has been selected. Muhammad, for example, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there are two messengers in between. Now Muhammad conveys the, the message to, the, to his fellow men, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So from Allah to these common people, there are two links in between. The one messenger is the angel. The other messenger, he is also messenger. He has brought the message from Allah to Muhammad wasallam. So messenger number one is the angel. Messenger number two is the messenger from among human beings. It was, sometimes it was Nuh, sometimes it was Hud, sometimes it was Saleh, sometimes it was Moses, sometimes it was Jesus, sometimes it was Muhammad wasallam. Allah chooses from in angels also messengers and from mankind also. In Allah Samiun Basir. Verily Allah is all seeing, all listening. Ya Lamuma Bana He knows whatever is before them and whatever is in behind them. And all the matters will finally be returned to Allah for final judgment. This is resurrection and this is the day of judgment. So these are the three articles of faith which have been summarized here in four ayat. Tawheed versus Shirk. Institution of messengerhood. This messengerhood continuing to, con being consisting of two links. The angel messenger and the man, human messenger. And then returning to the Lord for the final judgment and for the reward. Now the address comes to those who say we believe in these things. Now you and I, we are being addressed. Ya ayyuhu alladhina amanu. Oh those who believe, who profess to believe, who say, who claim that they believe in Allah and His unity. And they believe in the institution of messengerhood. And that Muhammad is the last messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Quran is the last message of Allah. And who believe in resurrection and the life hereafter. Now... There are commands for action. Ya yuladina amanur ka'u. Bow before your Lord. Was judu. Prostrate before your Lord. Wa abudu rabbakum. And worship and be bondsmen to your Lord. I explained this ibadah. It has two elements. Total obedience. Total obedience. And strong love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ruku sujood. These are the two members of Salah, our namaz, our prayer. But then, you should not only pray, you should not only fast, you should not only do the Hajj. You have to obey Allah in all of your life, all aspects. Your individual life, your collective life, your community life, your political life. Everywhere you have to be a bondsman to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa'abudu rabbakum. Wa'fanul khair. Something more also. Do good deeds. Now the question can arise. The Salah has been mentioned. Ruku has come. Sajda has come. And total obedience has come. Now what remains? For which there is these words. Wafalul khaira. You know, obedience is to the command that has been given. Do this. Don't do this. This is obedience. Over and above that, if you devote yourself for the service of mankind, this is when you have paid zakah, well, you have done your duty. Obedience is okay. But no, spend more, give more. Till such time, retain with you only what is necessary for you. 
Don't retain anything which is extra surplus with you. Give it away. So this is wafalul khair. This is not obligatory. This is voluntary. You can do it if you like. If you don't want, don't do it. But wafalul khair. But service of humanity. Now there are I, once I made a speech here in some hotel in function of this very center. The service has three levels. Number one, you feed a hungry. It's a service to mankind. You arrange for treatment for a sick person. It's a service. Okay? And this concept of service is common to all humanity. Hindus, Sikhs, Parsis, Isais, they are low. These are good deeds. Everybody must do it. But then there is the service number two. And that is the real service. Try to save them from the fire of hell. If you have fed them here, the fire of hunger in their stomachs, you know, you have extinguished. But they are going to be thrown into the fire of hell forever. And you are not caring for that. So, dawa ilallah, call towards Allah, so that these people can be saved from the eternal fire of hell. That is the biggest service. This was the service. You know, that, that general service Muhammad was doing from the very beginning, before Wahi had started. To look after the orphans and the widows and to feed the hungry, that he was doing already. But after the Wahi started, now what was the service which he was doing? To save people from the fire of hell. Calling them toward the right path. Oh people, take to the right path. Come to sirat e mustaqeem Believe in Allah alone. Worship Him alone. So that you are saved from the doom in the hereafter. And the third level is to establish the just social order here in this world. You are feeding the hungry, good work. But why are they hungry? They are hungry due to the unjust distribution of wealth in your system. The wealth has been accumulated with certain people. And the rest are going hungry. Now you are feeding the hungry. But you are keeping that system as such. You must shatter this system and you should establish the system of social justice so that hunger is eliminated. Otherwise, how many hungry will you be able to feed? You must change this system. And this is called Iqama to Deen, to establish the system of social justice that has been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the form of Deenul Haq through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So these are the three levels of service to humanity. Now you do these four things. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Only then you can hope to have salvation. Don't think that only because you say we believe, you have the salvation. Oh, no! تِلْكَ amaniyum. They are, this is their wishful thinking. They have fabricated these aqaid for them. There is no guarantee from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ Oh, you who believe, oh, you who profess to believe, bow before your Lord, prostrate before your Lord, be a total obedient and servant to Him, and do good deeds, so that you attain salvation. Now, if salvation can be attained without these things, this is meaningless passage then. This is conditional. وَالْعَصْرُ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرُ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاسُوا بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسُوا بِالصَّبْرِ the starting point of that selected course of study of Qur'an, which I mentioned in my last lecture, the basis is Sunatul Asr. By the token of time, by the fleeing time, all mankind is doomed except those who come to believe and who do good deeds and who exhort each other something which is true and good. And they exhort each other to persevere in the way of truth. Unless you fulfill these four conditions, you are doomed. In the same way, if you want to have the salvation, Ya you Allah Zina Amanurkaru, Vasyudu, Wabudu Rabbakum, Wafanul Khaira, Lal Nakum Tuflehu. And this is not all. Wajahidu fillahi haqqa jihadi. And make jihad in the way of Allah 
as much as is the right of Allah. He is your creator, he is your sustainer. Just imagine how much right he has over you. And how much are you working for him? And what is what this the art for? To establish that system of social justice. Do you have to make the art? These exploiters will never give up their exploitation. These oppressors are never ready to give up their oppression. These discriminators, they will never give up discrimination. You, have, you will have to fight them out. Muhammad had to fight them out. There can be no better preacher, no better teacher than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa But he had to go to fight against those people. Otherwise, injustices cannot be finished. Exploitation cannot be put an end to. These things will continue. Jahidu fillahi haqqa jihadi. Make jihad in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As much as he is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, he has chosen you who was tabaku. Be merry. Rejoice. You are a chosen one. This ummah has been chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have read the ayah in Surah Al Imran. Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhridat lin nas, ta'amuruna bil maruf wa tanhauna anil murkar. You have been raised for the purpose, for the benefit of the humanity at large. Your mission is to and join up all humanity whatever is correct, to forbid them what, from whatever is wrong and munkar. And you should have faith in Allah. He has selected you. You are the chosen one. This word ishtiba, and we have the word istifa. Allahu yastafi min al malaikat rusulan. We read it. And from istifa is the word Mustafa. Muhammad Mustafa. And for ishtiba is mujtaba. Ahmad mujtaba. This word is used for the, for the messengers. So as an ummah, we are messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah sent his messenger Muhammad. And Muhammad assigned this messengerhood to us on the day of his last pilgrimage. When he said, now the burden has shifted from my shoulders to yours. فَلْيُبَلِّغِ شَاهِدُ الْغَائِبَ جَاهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِهِ هُوَ اجْتَبَاكُمْ He has selected you. وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجْ And he has put no impediments in your way in religion. وِلَّا تَعْبِيكُمْ إِبْرَاهِيمُ Because the first addressees are who? Banu Ismail. So this deen which Muhammad has brought for you, well, this is the deen of Ibrahim, your, your grandfather. أَبِيكُمْ إِبْرَاهِيمُ هُوَ سَمَّاكُمُ الْمُسْلِمُ Allah has given you the name of Muslimin. You are the people who have surrendered themselves to the will of Allah. من قبل و في هذا before also or here also لي يكون الرسول شهيدا عليكم so that our messenger becomes witness against you he will stand on the day of judgment and testify oh Allah your message which came to me through Jibreel I had conveyed to them now they are responsible they are accountable in this same way, you will be required to stand up and say, Oh Allah, the message which we received through Muhammad, we had conveyed it to the whole humanity. And if we fail to do it, then we are the culprits. The blame will come to us. People can sue us in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, they had your book. They claimed that they are the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But they never conveyed to us your message. Never. Rather, their own actions were just contrary. They were saying something else, doing something else. This is the position. لَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ شَهِيدًا عَلَيْكُمْ وَتَكُونُ شُهَدَا عَلَى النَّاسِ فَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُ الزَّكَاةِ So establish salah and zakah وَعْتَصِبُوا بِاللَّهِ And cling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hold fast to Him. هُوَ مَوْلَاكُمْ he is your protector. Fanem al Maula. How good a protector he is. Fanem al Nasir. How fine a helper he is. Now we come to the next surah, Al Mu'minun. Bismillah ar-Rahmani rahim The first section of this surah, rather half of it, is also one of the most important lessons of that selected course of study. It gives us the foundations on which the character of a true mu'min can be built. We have to build the character. 
unless we have the character of mu'mineen we won't be able to work for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we won't be able to to make jihad in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first of all the individual character has to be on that pattern what are the foundations on which this building of character or sira of a true mu'min can be built qadaf lahal mu'minun verily the believers have already attained salvation very good news who are those believers alladheena hum fi salatihim khashi'un who humble in their prayers when they are praying they are very humble walladheena hum anil laghwi muridun and those who keep keep away from vain things useless things what we call past times why this time is very precious either it should be spent so that some need of this world is fulfilled need real need or this time should be spent to earn something some reward for the hereafter not to waste to pass time is not a problem this is the most precious capital we have we have the only capital in this time that we have whatever we can make for the hereafter is in this time so we can't waste it in vain things wal ladina hum bis zakat fa'iloon and those who keep on doing zakat because this is the surah revealed in early makki period so zakat here doesn't mean the institutional zakat that is one of the pillars of islam but the process of zakat continually giving away arms to the needy to the poor this is continuous process of purification of yourselves and your wealth if you have given the due of the poor then your your wealth is now pure wal ladina hum li furujihim hafizun and those who guard their private parts their sexual urge they control it illa ala azwajihim except in regard to their wives aw ma malakat amanhum or those whom their right hands possess the concubines only two here fainahum ghairu malumin in this case they are not blame worthy sex is not an evil in itself it's only evil when some unlicensed unpermitted way you adopt otherwise with your wife with your concubines it's okay no blame it's not evil it's not bad it's a normal requirement of nature It's the normal requirement of society. Just as you want to preserve yourself, you want to preserve your species, and this is the way that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has prescribed. For many tagawara azaleka, but whosoever exceeds from there, wives and concubines, and then he exceeds, goes somewhere else, that is adultery. For many tagawara azaleka, for Allah kahumul adun, then they are the transgressors. وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ لِأَمَانَاتِهِمْ وَحَدِيمٌ رَعُونَ and those who keep their trusts and covenants guard them whatever promise they have made whatever amana trust they have been trusted with something they guard them وَالَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَوَاتِهِمْ يُحَافِظُونَ and those who guard over their prayers at proper time with proper you know method establish in congregation offering namaz offering salah in congregation ulaika humul warisun such people will be the inheritors inheritors of what alladhina yarisun al firdaus who will inherit the gardens of paradise hum fiha khalidun and they will live in them forever forever now come these ayat which in the first section of surah al hajj also inna khalaqnakum min turabin thumma min nutfatin thumma min alaqatin thumma min mudghatin mukhallaqatin wa ghaira mukhallaqatin this process this embryonic process the process of embryology and this is the most important place in quran for the description of these stages of evolution of a human fetus وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ سُلَالَةٍ مِنْ تِينٍ and we have created man out of the extract of mud the mud is extract 
whatever we eat, where from is it coming? From the mud. So, we, this is the extract of the mud that is giving us power, strength, energy. Summa jalna hunut fatan fi karari maki. Then the next stage was, we put him as a sperm drop in the safe lodging of the wall of the womb of the mother. Now it is there for some time. Summa khalakna nutfata alakatan. Then we create from this nutfa alaka. Now this word had been translated till this time as a clot. But there is no basis of this translation. Alaka. Alaka is something which is muallak. Hanging. Muallak ho jana. Hanging. Because now the next stage is that it is attached to the wall of the womb of the mother just as a leech. Hanging. This is alaka. This is the third stage. That is why, you know, these embryologists in Toronto University, and they wrote it, that these stages, as they are described in Quran, it's wonderful. They could never see it. Imagine that 1400 years ago, when there was no microscopes, no dissections, how this description had been able. Dr. Keith L. Moore, his textbook on embryology is read all the world over, and he says this. So, and then this alaka, we create out of it a lump of flesh. From this lump of flesh, we create bones. And then we clothe these bones with flesh, with muscles. And then we raise him to another creation. What is this another creation? Khalqan Akhir. Because at this stage, the angel is sent, and the ruh, the spirit that was there in the stores, in the alame, abr, that ruh is brought by the angel, and now blown into this fetus. Now it is human being. Before that, it was a living creature, not a human being. Adam, when was created, he passed through all the stages of creation. And then you, all the finishing touches were given to him. Then when Allah blow, blow, blew into him from his own spirit, now he became Adam. And this process is repeated in the womb of the mother, every human child. This is a hadith from Abdullah ibn Masood, رضي الله تعالى عنه, متفقون عليه, Bukhari, Muslim, both. The Prophet said, for 40 days, you are a sperm, Nutfa. And then 40 days, you are alaka. Another 40 days you are Muzha. After 120 days, Allah sends, Fayur Salul Malak, the angel is sent, Fayan Fahufihi Ruh, and he blows into it the Ruh. The Ruh doesn't mean life. It was not dead matter. Already it was a living matter. Very much living. The sperm was very much living, very mobile, very active. And even the ovum that has come from the mother's side is a living thing. So every, in all these stages, for 120 days, it was not a dead thing, dead matter, it was living. But it was not human. Till such time that the angel comes, and then he blows and joins that roof with it. And here Quran says, Summa anshanahu khalqan akhar. Now another creation which we have taken. Fatabarakallahu ahsanul khaliqeen. So, Allah is best of the creators and blessed. Summa inna kumbada zalika lamayyatun. Then after this, all of you will have to die. You have come in this world. But then, that is to come. Summa inna kum yawm al qiyamati tubasun. Then there will come a day, a day of resurrection, when you will be raised again. So this is so simple. If he could create you from dust, can't he create you again? The sequence, you know, it shows it's nothing. It's just logical. Whosoever has done this up till now, he can do this also. And we have built over you seven heavens. And we have never been unaware of our makhluk, of our 
creation. We know each and everything of the creation. And we send down water from the heaven in a mayor with an estimated amount. Fast and now fill earth and then make it settle in the land, in the earth. And we are powerful, we can take it away from you whenever we like. This water which is going to be a very big problem, shortage of water, that time is soon coming. These famines and droughts, how many droughts in India or in many countries, water is going to be a problem. If Allah takes it away, who will bring it back? And now Allah is a habib, we are very much powerful, we can take it away from you. But then, with this water, we have raised for you the gardens of palm dates and and you know, wines and grapes. Lakum fiha fava keha kasiratan. In these things you have many fruits, raminha takulun, and also food. You eat out of them. Mashadanatan takhrudum in ture sena. And that tree which comes out from the Mount of Sina, that is olive tree, with dohun, it grows with oil, the olive oil. It is coming from a tree. Vasimgin lila keleen. And it is a sauce for the eaters. They used to eat, you know, their bread. Touch it with, with this olive oil and eat it. It was just like, you know, a sauce. Vainna lakum fil anam il aibra. And there is for you a lesson in your kettle. Nuskikum mimma fi butuniha. We give you to drink from what is in their bellies. The milk, where does it come from? From their bellies. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَنَافِعُ كَسِيرَةٌ And you have so many purposes fulfilled through these cattle. وَمِنْهَا تَعْكُلُونَ And some of them you eat, their, their meat. That's a source of protein for you. وَعَلَيْهَا وَعَلَى الْفُلْكِ تُحْمَلُونَ And on these cattle and on the ships you are carried. You are carried by the horses, by the camels, mules and donkeys, and these boats and ships. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ And we had sent news to his nation. فَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ عِبُدُ اللَّهَ And he said to them, O oh my people, worship Allah, مَا لَكُمْ مِنِ اللَّهِ غَيْرُهُ You don't have any other God except Him. أَفَلَا تَتَّقُونَ Don't you fear Allah? فَقَالَ الْمَلَوْ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ قَوْمِهِ The chieftains from his nation, from his people, who disbelieved him, said, Oh people, this new is not nothing, but a bashar, a man, a mortal man, human being like you. You read when you he wants to be superior over you, so that you believe him, and he becomes your leader and ruler. So he is ambitious, he wants power. If Allah had to send some messenger, he could send some angel. It means they believed in Allah. Because they were mushriks, you know. Who is a mushrik? A mushrik is the one who believes in the Allah, the big Allah, the great Allah, and aleha, small Allahs with them, small ilah with them. The, cap, the, the God with capital G, God, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. But gods and goddesses with small g, numberless, numerous. This is the game. Mahadeo, one. Devis and Devatas, Beshumar, endless. So, Ma Sameena Bihaza Fi Abayna Lamwareen, had Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to send a messenger, he could send an angel. And we have not <coughs> heard about these things in our forefathers, what this Nu is saying. In Huwa Illa Rajarun Bihi Jinnah, we think that this is a person. Either he has been possessed by jinns or some madness has come to him. So, 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 just wait, see what happens with him. Don't you know, accept him and don't believe in him hastily. For, for a while you wait. No pray to Allah. Oh, Allah, help me. Because they have belied me. 
So we send the revelation to him. And it's saying, Fulka be ayunina wahilna. Make an ark according to our wahi, revelations. We shall give instructions how to build it. And in our before our eyes, you build it. Faiza ja amruna. When our command comes, wa farat tanur. And the oven boils up. First look fiha. Then enter. Make enter in this ark of yours. Min kulli zawjan is then. A pair, two from every kind. Wahalaka and your family also. Illa man sabaka alayhi al-qawl minhum. Except against whom the word has already gone forth. Your son, he is kafir, he won't come here. One of your wives, kafir, she won't be entered here. وَلَا تُخَاتِبْنِي فِي الَّذِينَ ظَلَبُوا And now don't address me, don't talk to me about those people who are, have wronged themselves. إِنَّهُمْ مُغْرَقُونَ Now they are going to be drowned, all of them. فَإِذَا سَوَيْتَ أَنْتَ وَمُمْ مَعَكَ عَلَى الْفُلْقِ When you are settled, you and those who are with you on the ark, فَقُلِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِينَ جَانَا مِنَ الْقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ Then say, all praise be to Allah who has delivered us from these evil-doing people. وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَنزِلْنِي مُنزَلَ الْمُبَارَكًا And then pray to Allah. O oh Allah, cause me to land a blessed landing when this ark and this, you know, ship or boat comes to land somewhere, it should be a blissful and blessed landing. Now just remember the dua which was taught to Muhammad. وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَدْخِلْنِي مُدْخَلَ صِدْقٍ وَأَخْرِجْنِي مُخْرَجَ صِدْقٍ وَجْعَلْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ سُلْطَانَ النَّسِيرًا It's very parallel. أَنزِلْنِي مَنْزَلَ الْمُبَارَكًا O Allah, may cause me to land at a blessed landing. And you are the best of those who bring to land. In the Fizalika la ayat and Wain Kunna la Mutaleen. In these, in this are these signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have been, surely, we have been testing humanity from the very beginning. Farsallah Summa and Shana mi Badihim Karnan Akharin, after them, we raised another generation. Farsallah Ilahim Rasulam in whom? And then we sent our messenger in them also. His name is not taken, but he is Hazrat Hud alayhi salatu wa salam, who was sent to the nation of Aad. Anaybudullaha malakum min ilahin gairu, the same message he conveyed. You should worship and obey Allah, and you don't have any God except him. Afalat al-taqoon, so don't you fear him. Wa qal al-malaw min qawmihi, and the chieftains from his nation also said, Al-lazina kafaru, who had disbelieved him, وَقَزَّمُوا بِلِقَاءِ الْآخِرَةَ آخِرَةِ And they have denied that they are going to, they have to meet their Lord in the hereafter. وَأَتْرَفْنَاهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاتِ الدُّنْيَا And we had given them wealth, affluence in this worldly life. What did they say? مَا هَذَا إِلَّا بَشَرُمْ مِسْلُكُمْ This hood is nothing but a mortal human being like you. يَاكُلُوا مِمَّا تَاكُلُونَ He eats the same food which you eat. وَدْيَشْرَبُوا مَا تَشْبِمْ مَا تَشْرَبُونَ And he drinks from which you drink. وَلَا إِنَا تَعْتُمْ بَشَرَمْ مِسْلَكُمْ And if you obey and follow a man like you, إِنَّكُمْ إِذَا اللَّهَ خَاسِرُونَ Then you are the losers. Well, we have the right, you should obey us. But don't obey this Ud or Nuh or Saleh. أَيَعِدُكُمْ أَنَّكُمْ إِذَا بِتْتُمْ وَكُنْتُمْ تُرَابًا وَعِزَامًا Does he promise with you that when you are dead and you have become dust and bones, إِنَّكُمْ Mukhrajun, you will again be taken out as living from your graves. Hai haat, hai haat, alimatu adun. Unbelievable, unbelievable. What promise is being given to you? In hiya illa hayatun ad dunya. There is no life for us except the life of this world. Namutu wa dahiya. We ourselves die, we ourselves live. Wa ma nahnu bi mabhusin. And we are not going to be resurrected. In huwa illa rajulun iftara ala Allah al-Qazimah. This fellow, this Hud, alayhi salatu wa salam, he is but a person who has forged lies against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa ma nahnu lahu bi mu'mineen. And we are not going to believe in him. Qa'al rabbin surni bi maa kazzaboon. The same prayer Hazrat Hud made to Allah. Oh Allah, help me. Because they have belied me. Qa'al amma qalilin fa la yusbihunna. Nadimeen. Allah said, okay, in a very little while, they will be repentant on, and they will become repentant on what they have been doing. فَأَخَذَتْهُمُ السَّيْحَةُ بِالْحَقُّ 
So they were seized by a shout with, with truth. فَجَعَلْنَاهُمْ وَسَا And we made them all this scum, like scum. فَبَوْدَ الْلِقَوْمِ الظَّالِمِينَ So away for, the, for this evil-doing people. سُبَّا أَنْشَانَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ قَرُونَ نَاخِرِينَ Then we raised after them other, other generations. مَا تَسْبِقُ مِنْ أُمَّةٍ أَجَلَهَا وَمَا يَسْتَاخِرُونَ No ummat could hasten the term that Allah had fixed for them, nor it could delay it. The time, promised time, when that came, they were destroyed. Summar Salna Rusulana Tatra. Then we kept on sending our messengers one by one, one after the other. Mutavatir Tatra. Kullama Ja Umatan Rasuluha. Whenever a messenger came to any people, Kazabu, they denied him, belied him. Fatbada Bazahum Baza. So we sent them one after the other. We destroyed them one after the other. Vajalnaum ahadis. And now we have made them stories and history. There was a nation called Aad, and there was a nation called Subud, and there was the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, and there was a nation called Madian. Now all they are stories. Summar Salla Musa wa Akahu Haruna, the Ayatina wa Sultani Mubid. And then, in the end, we may say, we sent Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and his brother Harun with our signs, miracles, was sultani mubin and clear authority. Ila Fir'aun wa malayhi to Fir'aun and his chieftains. Fastakbaru, they became arrogant. Wakanu qawman aaleen, and they were very self-exalting people. Fakalu, they said, Shall we believe in two persons, two human beings, who are just like us? And their nation, their community is slave to us. They belong to our slave nation. They belong to Bani Israel, Musa and Harun. And, Mus and this Bani Israel are slaves. How come they stand before us and say, Obey us. We are the messengers of Allah. We are the representatives of your Lord. You have to obey us. Who are they? They are the people of our slave nation. وَقَوْمُهُمَا لَنَا عَابِدُونَ فَكَذَّبُوهُمَا So they belied both of them. فَكَانُوا مِنَ الْمُهْلَكِينَ But then they became from those, among those who were destroyed and finished. وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا مُوسَى الْكِتَابَ لَا لَهُمْ يَحْتَدُونَ But then we, made, we gave Musa the book, Torah. So that the people take to the right path. Vajalna Abna Maryam Aba Ummahu Aya. And in the same way, we made Maryam Salamun Alayha. Ibn Maryam, son of Maryam Wa Ummahu and his mother. Hazrat Isa and Hazrat Maryam. Aya. We made them also a sign. Wa Awaina Huma Ila Rabbatin Zati Karari Wa Ma'in. And we gave them refuge, shelter on a mount, on a hillock where there was running springs. Ya Yuhar Rasul, O our messengers, Kulu minat tayyibat, eat from whatever is pure, wa'amalu saliha, and do good deeds. Inni bibat amaluna alim. Whatever you are doing, we know it, I know it. Wa inna hadihi ummatukum ummatam wahida. And this is the ummah of all of you, and this is one ummah. All the messengers belong to one Ummah. They were all Muslims. They were all messengers of Allah. They were all obedient to Allah. وَعَنَا رَبُّكُمْ فَعْبُدُونَ فتقول And I am your Lord, so fear me only. فَتَقَطَّعُوا أَمْرَهُ بَيْنَهُمْ زُبُرًا So they split their matter, that is religion, between them into different forms. كُلُّ حِزْبٍ بِمَا لَدَيْهِمْ فَرِحُونَ And every sect is proud of what it has. One reality broken into pieces. One piece is with him, one piece is with him. And everybody is rejoicing that I have the total total reality, while they have the partial realities with them. فَذَرْهُمْ فِي قَبْرَتِهِمْ حَتَّعِهِمْ So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi leave them in their bewilderment for a time. أَيَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّ مَا نُمِدُّهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ مَعِينَ وَبَنِينَ Do they think that actually 
we are assisting them when we are giving them wealth and sons no sare ulo fil karat they think that we are giving them good nay bal la yashuru they don't know because actually this is wealth and this sons they will become the basis of their chastisement in this world we have twice this month moon you know in surah at tauba this subject has come inna ma yuridu allah li yu'azzibahum biha fil hayati dunya wa tazhaq anfusuhum wa hum kafirun so don't be impressed by the wealth and the bodies of these munafiqeen twice in surah surah at tauba because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give them the chastisement and punishment in this world by this wealth you have much wealth now you have lost some and you are gone despair you have incurred a loss you had a son he died and you are despaired maybe the son has gone astray now he is against you he is standing before you and you calling conversing with you at equal level and you how grieved you are he was his by son i raised him and today he is he is talking with me as equal rather my superior so this azab comes through wealth and also through sons and daughters inna alladhina hum min khashiyat rabbihim mushfiqun verily those who are in awe, in awe who remain in awe for the fear of their lord wa alladhina hum bi ayati rabbihim yu'minun and those who believe in the signs and revelations of their lord wa alladhina hum bi rabbihim la yushrikun and those who do not associate anybody anyone with their lord wa alladhina yutuna ma ata and those who give what they give whatever they spend wa qulubuhum wajila and their hearts are full of fear annahum ila rabbihim raji'un that they are going to be to return to their lord amma man khafa maqama rabbihi wa naha an-nafsa 'anil hawa fa inna al-jannata hiya al-bawa who so ever keeps fearing that a day will come when he will have to stand before his lord for this accountability so that person you know and he restrains the lusts of his nafs nah nafs an al hawa well he for him is the jannah ulaika yusariuna fil khairat wa hum laha sabiqun these are the people who are racing with each other for good good deeds virtues and they are the foremost in these things wala nukallifu nafsan illa wusaha we are not going to hold responsible any soul except according to its capacity we know every person every human being what we have given him what were the genes with which his body was formed what were the environments in which he was living where he was born in china or japan or hindustan or where what were the environment where he was raised keeping all these factors in view then we shall judge them how good how much good he could do in these circumstances if he has attained it okay he is successful if he fails he fails but you know there is not one standard for all the human beings no because different human beings they have been born and they have been created with different backgrounds different genes and they have been brought up in different environments they have different educations all these things will count and keeping all these factors in view allah will then judge between the peoples la nukallifu nafsan illa wusaha we shall hold responsible every soul but only up to the capacity wa ladaina kitabun yantiqu bil haq and we have the record which tells everything truly he knows what genes were given to me he knows it they are recorded وهو لا وهم لا يظلمون and they will not be wronged بل قلوبهم في غمرة من هذا but these the hearts of these people they are covered and blind about these things ولهم اعمال من دون ذلك and they are busy in some other types of activities luxuries and you know enjoying and just babar bash kosh ke alam dobara ghist لا هم لها عاملون they are busy in these things حتى إذا أخذنا مترفيهم بالعذاب till that time that when we seize the affluent among them with our chastisement is ahum yajarun then they begin begin then they begin weeping and mourning and groaning la tajarul yawm allah will say no mourning and groaning today 
in the kumina latun sarun. Now nobody can come to your help against us. You have to bear everything. Kad kanat ayati tutla alekum. My ayat were recited to you. Kad kanat ayati tutla alekum. Fakun tu mala akabikum tan kisun. But you used to turn away on your heels and go away. And then listen to my ayat. Mustagmirin, in arrogance. Behi samiran tahjurun. And you, you used to talk about it mockingly during the night. Afalam yaddabbarul qawl. Do they not ponder over this, what has been said to them? Amjahum malam yaati abahumul awwaleen. Or the matter is that to them has come what did not come to their forefathers. This is an apology for these people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is presenting. Because these people, these Quraysh, these progeny of Ismail, they had no prophet, no messenger, no book for two, more than 2,000 years. So they became absolutely unaware of these things. A thing has come to them which didn't come to their forefathers. Have they not been able to recognize their messenger? And that is why they are denying him. Do they say that he is possessed by a jinn? Or he has some, you know, mental disturbance? Bal, jahum al haq. No. Haq, the truth has come to them. Wahum aksaruhum lil haqqi karehun. And most of them abhor this truth. And if the truth had followed their lusts and their wishes and their desires, then the heavens and the earth would have been corrupted. And whatsoever is within them. But we have brought to them their admonition, their zikr, reminding for them. But they are from their admonition, and reminding, they are turning away. Am tasaluhum kharjan. O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Are you asking some tribute from them? Do you ask for some rewards? You should pay me this salary. I am doing this service to you. Am tasaluhum kharjan. Fa kharaj wa rabbi ka khair. The tribute that your Lord will pay to you is much better. You are not, not asking them any tribute. Any wage. Wa huwa khairul razaqeen. And definitely. Allah is the best provider. And, O oh Muhammad, you are calling them to the right path. And those, those people who don't believe in the hereafter, actually they are deviating from the right path. And and if we had mercy on them, and we had removed the affliction that is upon them, they would persist in their insolence wandering blindly. وَلَقَدْ أَخَزْنَاهُمْ azab, And we have seized them with the punishment. Maybe during the, at the time when these ayat were revealed, some small affliction was there to the Makki people. Just like a famine. You know, it has been the practice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever He sent a messenger to a people, then He sent some hardships, some small chastisements, so that they may be, if they are sleeping, they may wake up. So these are the, you know, things which have been coming before the final annihilation. That is Adab al-Akbar. This ayah is there in Surah Usaida. وَلَا نُزِيقَلْنَهُمْ مِنَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَدْنَى دُونَ الْعَذَابِ الْأَكْبَرِ before that great chastisement, when they will all be washed off from the surface of the earth, these small chastisements we have been sending, so that perchance they wake up from their slumber. We have seized them with chastisement, but they humbled not for their Lord. And they are not invoking with submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hatta idha fatahna alayhim baban za abadin shadidin till that time when we open for them the door of a very severe chastisement. Idahum fihi mublisud. Then they become absolutely despaired and disappointed in it. 
بارک اللہ علی ولکم فی القرآن العظیم و نفانی و ایاکم بالآیات و ذکر الحکیم اللہ اکبر The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. 4. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at tanzeem.us or call our toll-free number, 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together, we can make a difference.